This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, buddy! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edge, where face attorney investigations to prosecutors path, everyone. We are, well, video-wise or recording-wise, I don't know, but recording-wise, we're finishing Turnabout Target today. Yeah. Just had nothing to do with the Target store. I'm disappointed. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really like this case. It's a cool case. We're cross-examining Yu-Gi-Oh. He shot the balloon. It's not Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh has purple in his hair. No, he doesn't. He has yellow. He has both. I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh has any purple in his hair. Pretty sure. Okay, Horace Knightley. We're cross-examining Horace Knightley. I shot the balloon. So I could look it up while you were doing this. So the victim had no part in your plan? Yeah, that's right. He didn't even know it was all fake. So you're saying he thought it was a real assassination attempt? Ah, but you fired the gun right next to him. Wouldn't he have noticed? Maybe he did. Not that it matters now. Besides, even if he thought the assassination attempt was a fake, his duty was to protect the king. He made a split-second decision to sacrifice himself. The victim was truly a man of honor. You're wrong. It was all part of my plan. He simply assisted in our little performance on stage. His go the goal was not to have him killed. Right. He waited in the cabin and I led the pre president. <laughs> Why did you do that? The assassination was supposed to be fake. There were a lot of guests milling about outside. Wouldn't it be bad if the president who just escaped an assassination was seen lounging around and drinking grape juice? Imagine the headlines. What was the victim doing at the time? How should I know? I was with the president inside the security room. Anyway, when it came out, Rook was already on the ground. Where did you find the body? About where he is now. He collapsed in the middle of this room. When I returned, the door to the plane was already closed. The bullet must have hit Rook be right before the door closed. Talk about a hassle! It's all his fault that this plan failed. Nightly! That's too far. Even if he protected the cane, he couldn't protect his honor. He was careless in his duty and he paid the price for it. Wow, dude. Here's the thing. He's been he dead got, for like an hour. The only way that he could have actually been shot there is if he was like, Ugh, and then had to <laughs> shut the door. Yeah, I really have to yawn. No, not yawn. Like, as if he was like, stretching his muscles like, ooh, you like that. And then <laughs> shut the door. That's the only way he could have been shot there. This man is truly despicable. As I was saying. Maybe if we took off his coat on the ground, maybe the bullet traveled through him. Like all the way? Maybe it was like. Well, oh, it, it went in one. Uh, well, it went out the other. That's oh, okay. that's why we thought it hit the president's bulletproof vest. Ooh. The bullet the lady fire must have hit him. Weren't you both carrying bulletproof attache cases? Yeah. When Rook noticed the laser pointer, we opened up those bad boys and became the president's shield. You're telling me the bullet slipped through the space in between your shields? Are you claiming that Miss Swift has such precise aim? Well, she was targeting the president. I wouldn't say her aim is precise at all. So the bullet was off target and just happened to hit the victim instead? Through the tiny gap between his bulletproof vest and case? I don't want to believe it, Ivor, but they say the truth is stranger than fiction. Rook was hit by a one in a million shot, and you have the evidence to prove it. Really? The shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. Yeah, and that's like... So the second shot wasn't part of your plan? That's right. She did that on her own. If you think about it, wasn't she desperate for a scoop? I'm a journalist! I ain't no mur! Well then, who was the one who joined the plan in order to get exclusive coverage? Uh, that's... It's just like you said. I orchestrated this fake assassination attempt. She was only supposed to be aiming the laser pointer. I guess it wasn't enough for her. She prepared her own gun and took aim at the president. She probably thought she wouldn't get caught if she went on and shot me too. Knightley fired the first shot, and then Miss Swift fired the second one. In other words, Nicole also had a gun. I never thought she was the type! Without any proof, it's just pure speculation. Then BAM! Let's present some evidence! 
So the thing that we need to remember is that Knightley's gun had two shots. He's claiming that he only shot the balloon. Right. That's the problem. And then he's saying that the gun that's in the trash is the assassin's Two gun. shots have been fired from the one in the trash. From the one in the trash. What about Knightley's gun? Um, we don't have that as evidence. Anymore? No. Nope. We should have. Dang it. Now I don't remember. Crime scene of... <laughs> Blood loss from a bullet wound in the chest. Bullet passed through his body, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we don't have... We never had Nightly's gun as Here's evidence. the thing. It's actually... I think what it might be is her tape recording. You if think she so? was truly recording during the whole speech thing, you would have heard the gunshot super close on her tape recorder. <laughs> my dear friends, there is a reason for my visit. <laughs> According to the schedule, there's a meeting after this. Wait, please. Yeah, there's <laughs> that. President raises his fist in the air, the atmosphere is boiling to a fever pitch. Uh, bang, bang. <laughs> bang, bang. Yeah. It would have been a lot trolley. louder if she was recording and then she did the bang. I don't think that's it, but okay. we can try it's, it. It's at least something I've thought about. All right, well, we can try it. So, you want it on that one? Sure. I don't see the point of your testimony. Oh, and you think you're any better? Always rambling on and on. You're the one who can't make a straight point. You sure you have the capacity for this? Mentally speaking. Ah, there was no contradiction. I need to calm down and think things over again. So... Shot was fired from the gun we found in the trash. You want to try the gun on that one? Sure. I don't know why, though. So you shot the balloon, and Miss Swift shot Rook? Is that really true? I can't see it any other way. She was on the other side. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. The number of gunshots don't add up. Why don't the gunshots add up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence left behind by the real criminal. Fake evidence? Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we'd assume that the assassin was in the audience. In order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin, the gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. I get it, because two shots were fired during the incident. However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's life. <laughs> Here it comes. You're packing some serious heat. Enough with the song and dance. You've come this far. Go ahead and say it. I won't just say it. I'll prove it. Oh, really? The one who really shot Rook is... I mean, just say it's him. It was... Rook himself! Why would Rook himself do that? Look at this. It was this person. Hey, you. You really don't know anything, do you? Are you looking for something? No, I'm good. Was that supposed to be a joke? Or are you serious? Hey. That's not right. Mr. Edgeworth's so smart that our feeble minds just can't comprehend his reasoning. This is like the exact opposite of when Phoenix Wright gets up and like, Phoenix, you're an idiot. You're stupid. stupid. You shouldn't be a lawyer. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so, Kay. It's yeah, you, Horace, Horace Knightley. Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. Heh. <laughs> you finally said it. Knightley, you couldn't have. The killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim he was a victim of the assassination. Also, then you would get the... dumb... He would be the team leader. Basically. He really wanted to be the varsity baseball team. <laughs> a captain. He wanted to be the whole team. <laughs> Just him. Uh, first base, Bugs Bunny. Second base, Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> shortstop, Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Second, third base, Bugs Bunny. Catcher, Bugs no. Bunny. Shortstop, Bugs Bunny. Right. First base. I, I already said that like twice. <laughs> Once the He's every single one, including the swapping. <laughs> <laughs> the positions. Once the president had entered the security room and the door to the plane was closed, only the victim and Knightley would have been left in this room. And at that moment, you fired a third bullet. Directly at Rook. A third bullet? Ha! Only two gunshots were heard! The numbers don't match up! The plane's walls are soundproof. If the door was closed, the gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? 
That's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? I didn't hear any gunshots. But weren't you Maybe watching this a... room for the security cameras? Maybe he had a silencer on it. Hmm. That's possible. The cameras in this room aren't usually turned on. I turned on the power after I entered the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No. Actually, I... I... He's shaking. What is it? He's not being clear. Mr. President, focus. This is vital. I... I, I was... That is, I... Please! I was hiding under the bed, covering my ears. What?! But you knew the assassination was fake! It doesn't matter! I simply hate the sound of guns! That terrifying sound! I just can't help it! So it doesn't matter anyway, because he would have plugged his ears. Da -da -da -da. That definitely ain't gonna be in my article. <laughs> <laughs> Ahem. Knightley, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the monitors. In that moment, when the president wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Knightley, did you really? You deceived me. You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Have a little faith in me. The bodyguard who's risking his life to protect you. Fake protect you. I, I want to believe you. I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. This gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets makes that clear. Maybe it was one short to begin with. Ever think of that? No. What? I mean, this is... The... Every time it's like, the number of gunshots don't matter, but well, only... maybe it was fired before the crime scene. If it was, it would be, it would have been fired into the bulletproof vest for that evidence. That would be the only... Because it's the Zane Fa pistol. Yeah. What? Maybe it had already fired a shot yesterday or the day before. And the second shot was fired today. The one that hit Rook. Well, isn't that just the perfect excuse? Excuse? The possibility exists. You can't deny that. He's right. I can't deny it completely. You need decisive evidence. Evidence so decisive that it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? Gah! Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything? At this rate, Nicole will... Mr. Prosecutor. It's true. I did an awful thing for a scoop. But I never killed nobody! I could never do such a thing like that! Decisive evidence. If I could prove the murder weapon was Knightley's gun... Proof it was his gun? Yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet that hit the balloon. Then you could examine it and see if the ballistic markings matched my gun. If we can find the bullet that took Rook's life... We can determine which gun fired the shot from the ballistic markings. If you've got no evidence, then we're done talking. Objection. Hold it! Wh what You don't seriously have any decisive evidence, do you? Hm. <laughs> Naturally. That's a big joke. Well, come on now, show us. What is this so-called evidence? The bullet that took Rook's life. That's the decisive evidence I need. This evidence... Do I have it? I have it. I don't have it. I don't think we have it, but... Oh, that's actually it. Okay. I don't have it. Okay, okay! It's game over, man. However, it is somewhere in this room. What?! The bullet that killed Rook pierced through his body. So where did the bullet go? Earlier, you explained it like this. I think I might know what he looks like when he's, like, mad. Mm -hmm. I think it might look like Snake in the comics from Brawl in the Family. Oh. With his teeth a little bit. Maybe. It might be a little bit like that. The bullet that took Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. However, now that the fake assassination plan has come to light, we know that the bullet in the bulletproof vest was prepared earlier. 
So then where did the bullet go? Interesting. Very interesting. Do you have the answer? Do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet that killed Mr. Rook? I mean... Here's the thing. Regardless, I'm still thinking about that yoga mat or whatever that was stolen, because in that there... That doesn't have anything to do with it. But... The killer took it just so he could swim across the lake. That is it. Oh! Okay. Um, do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet? Is it just in the crime scene notes? Is it that simple? Oh wait! No, I know exactly where it is! Where? It's in the teddy bear case. With, uh, with the security monitors. Remember, because the, the glass is broken. Very perceptive, Marty. In this room, there is one thing that's clearly missing. Something missing? You sure it's not your brain? I'd like you to look at the rack, the rack of security monitors. The rack. Ugh. It seems you've noticed, Mr. President. Among these images of the plane's surroundings, only the feed from the right side of the plane is absent. That's what's missing. A single monitor. <laughs> Mr. President, there was originally a monitor here, wasn't there? Th that's right. Why is there a stuffed toy now? That must have been put there to hide the empty space where the monitor used to be. Why is the monitor missing? And where did it go? Why? Undoubtedly, because it was hit by the bullet. In order to make us think that the bullet really hit the bulletproof vest, it would be a problem if another bullet hole was discovered. So then, where did the monitor go? Where? It should be hidden somewhere inside this plane. There hasn't been a chance to dispose of it outside since it was shot. Detective Gumshoe, search this plane! Roger that, sir! President Wayne! You said extraterritorial laws apply to this plane! I will allow it. There's no problem. I just want to know the truth of Rook's death. Damn it! You think this is a joke? You're always like this! Rook this, Rook that! Detective, we have his approval. Go ahead. Mr. Edgeworth! I found it, sir! Good work, Detective. Now let's extract the bullet from the monitor. Hmm. If I do this here and then do that... I got it! Well, it's definitely stained with blood. I'm certain that this is the bullet that killed Rook. Bloody bullet data jotted down in the organizer. This is the bullet that will crush your arguments. The decisive evidence that blows a hole in your logic. If the ballistic markings on this bullet do not match the gun found in the audience area, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. What's wrong? Cat got your ton. Detective, we need to examine the ballistic markings. Send the gun and bullet to forensics. Roger! We should be able to find clear markings on this bullet, sir. Don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry! We're the best forensics team ever! Yeah, that's right! Here they are. <laughs> now then, let's listen to the forensic report. Reporting! Uh, first, the blood on this bullet matches the victim's blood. So this bullet really did take Rook's life. Also, Horace Knightley's fingerprints were found on this gun! Knightley's fingerprints probably came from when he took all of our evidence. The real issue is the ballistic markings. If the markings don't match, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. And this bullet's ballistic markings... They match this gun! What?! Th they... Match? What?! No, no way! There's no mistake! The bullet was fired from this gun! What? what Here's the thing. I think what happened... <laughs> huh? That's strange. Looks like I was right after all. Naturally. I think he swapped the gun. Also, the thing that... <sighs> swapped the gun? No, that's not, that's not what I was trying to say. Um... John Doe. John Doe. His arm was shot. Mm-hmm. By Rook's pistol. By Rook's pistol. The blood still matches this victim. Maybe just Winston Payne took a shot. <laughs> I don't know. That's Marty's theory of the it's ultimate not, plot twist. It's not Nicole. I mean, we kind of know that. Did you really think you had me cornered? Yeah. You misread the board. The one who's been cornered 
is you. Is you! Another oh. testimony? Do we get the ultimate cross-examination music? I think so. Nightly's logic. If the ballistic markings match the gun, there can be no doubt. The bullet that killed Rook was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. Who could have used the gun? Not me, because I was on stage. But what about that lady reporter in the audience? What about the lady reporter? All the evidence points to that young lady as the assassin killed Rook. Also, though, there's other people over there. Well, it's your move, Mr. Prosecutor. Where did you find this gun again? And which gun fired the bullet? At least we know. It ain't me. Ugh! This can't be happening. The President and I have admitted to the fake assassination plot. Now it's your turn to admit who the real criminal is. That doesn't make Nicole the criminal! Don't get riled up, Kay. Let him have his say first. After he's done, it won't be too late to begin our counterattack. Alright, Mr. Edgeworth! This is fun. Best cross-examination music, like, ever. I have to hear it. It's pretty good. It's I really do good. really I love it. like Apollo Justice's corner music. This isn't the corner music. This is literally just cross-examination music. Oh, yeah. This is the best cross-examination music. Sounds like corner, there's, like... Also best corner music in this game, I would say. <laughs> no, that's... Didn't you say it earlier? This is the decisive evidence. Gah! If we press on everything, is it just, like, gonna do that? I don't think so. Well, how does it feel to have a hole blown for your reasoning? The ballistic markings match the gun we found, so... Does that mean Nicole really was the shooter? I'd like to believe otherwise. But he's got the decisive evidence on his side, sir! Hmm, indeed. How should I proceed? If Miss Swift isn't the killer, then the ballistic markings should not match. Thoughts, Kay? Hmm. If the evidence is impossible, then maybe we should doubt the evidence itself, right? Doubt the evidence? Forensic Sky got paid two twenties to say otherwise. <laughs> he could be paid off. Nicole's definitely not a criminal. So, if the evidence says that she's a criminal, then there must be something wrong with it. You seem awfully sure of yourself. It's a great peep's intuition. I love that post. Intuition. With her. Still, it's quite possible. Above all, Miss Swift doesn't seem like the type of person to tell such elaborate lies. Hm. <laughs> In court, the evidence is everything. And yet here I am doubting it. Which evidence do I doubt? Oh, we just had to press once and then we get to the here. Should we doubt the gun, the bullets, or neither? Um, I doubt your existence. No, um, <laughs> that's kind of dumb. I think okay. everything is just a hallucinogenic nightmare. Luke, my boy, is clearly this is very simple. <laughs> this is dumb. Um, I think the thing that we could doubt- the gun was there, we could doubt the bullet. It could plant a bullet, right? With Rook's blood on it? Yeah, you could just be like, yes. <laughs> And it's smooshed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Wait, it's not- I thought it was- hmm. Could there be something strange about the bullet? Detective, did you do anything to the bullet when you first discovered it? Huh? Like what, sir? I don't know. Like, step on it? Or perhaps fall on it? Terrible, sir. You're terrible, Mr. Edgeworth! Wow! No! My ears! That was great. The bullet was only just found. Not even Gumshoe could have bungled it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I should doubt. You're terrible. None of the evidence seems particularly doubtful. Hmm, are you sure? Well, your prosecutor's badge seems a little doubtful to me. Could it be fake? That didn't explain the poor job you're doing here. <laughs> it's too early to draw conclusions. I don't have enough information yet. Yikes. I actually didn't know it was the gun. If anything's suspect here, it can only be the gun. The bullet was discovered just a moment ago. It couldn't have been tampered with yet. Did Knightley have a chance to tamper with the gun? You shall hand over all the evidence you've collected so far and leave this plane at once. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, be a good boy and do as you're told. Ugh! I cannot resist any longer. 
That's it. He could have tampered with the gun at that time. There's no doubt that this gun is the real murder weapon. In that case, the owner of this gun is... He must have switched the guns. Without a doubt, this is Knightley's own gun. Knightley's revolver data updated in the organizer. The bullet that killed Rook was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. It doesn't it doesn't do the same thing every time we press, I don't think. Knightley, you You're the one who should hold it. You proved it yourself. Don't tell me that you're going to betray your own logic. The bullet is stained with the victim's blood, so it's clear it took the victim's life. And the ballistic markings match the gun we found in the trash can. Nice, nice. Your face betrays your thoughts, Mr. Prosecutor. Ugh. At this rate, he'll get away. Now that you've got a firm grasp on reality, it's time to take the next step. The link between the gun and the bullet is clear, so... Who could have used the gun? You... Oh, wait, that wasn't the statement. What do you think of this? <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, haven't you forgotten the rules of chess? Hmm? Maybe I should present this instead? Gotcha! It's against the rules to touch a piece and then not move it. That's Take not the penalty! That's not true. Ah, what was I thinking? I think it's if you let go of the piece, then the move is finished. You can't undo it. Uh. Who could have used the gun? Who? Indeed. You already know the answer. You just don't want to admit it, huh? I know the feeling. It's probably like how I felt before. Feeling so irritated, you're just itching to pull the trigger. But, this ain't the time to be joking around. The problem is, he has a gun. So if, even if we do prove him to be the murderer, he could just shoot us. Only one person could have used that gun. Not me, I was on stage. Well, what they could do is I they was could singing do a, my heart out to they karaoke. They could do a repeat of the last game where they're like, this is the last case, and then it's like, oh man, Edward's dead. Let's look back at all the memories! <laughs> and it's like, like I, I, that would not be a very good game. <laughs> do you have proof that Miss Swift fired the gun? Whoa there! Didn't the boys in blue already prove that? But Nicole's fingerprints weren't found on the gun! And yours were all over it, pal! Oh, Objection! Well, that's because I was handling all the evidence earlier. If that lady isn't the killer, who else could it be? You were the one who cornered the assassin in the audience. Gah! Capiche? In fact, from every angle on the board. All the evidence points to that young lady as the assassin who killed Rook. I don't recall that being proven. Well, what exactly have you proved? Oh yeah! You proved that I fired the first bullet. But, you're forgetting one crucial thing. Why were you called in here in the first place? That's obvious, pal! We came to find the truth! Do you consider the worsening relationship with Zane Fa to be the truth? No. Your purpose here was to solve the attempted assassination incident. My purpose here is for me to decide. It is not to be decided by the likes of you. Whatever. If you spend all day arguing like this, the case is gonna go unsolved. Just give it up already. The real criminal is that lady over there. No, the real criminal can only be you. The ballistic markings match the gun we discovered in the trash can. When did Knightley have the opportunity to touch the gun? It could only have been when I handed over the evidence. Mr. Edgeworth, is there anything we can do? Our reasoning up until now has not been wrong. This is an obstacle we'll have to overcome. But doesn't it... Doesn't he have decisive evidence? A testimony born from lies will always contain a contradiction. Firstly, I'll need to press Knightley for more details. Already did that. Bullet that killed the rook was from the gun. Oh, this is the one we put the gun on. Object. Knightley, you fiend. You switched the guns. The gun that matched the ballistic markings was yours all along. Interesting choice of move you've made there. The switch occurred at the time you seized the evidence. When we were arguing with the president over the logic chess and the investigation rights. 
because we were in the chest dimension, we didn't notice you switching the laser sight on the gun from the, in the audience area. And attached it to your own gun. Then, when you returned the evidence, you gave me your own gun. <laughs> Did I do that? So what you're saying is that I knew you'd want to examine the ballistic markings. Indeed. Staying one move ahead of your opponent? Isn't that the fundamental rule of chess? I'm glad you feel that way, Mr. Prosecutor. But you're giving me too much credit. Besides, can you even prove I pulled the old switcheroo of the guns? Wait, there's another finger, testimony? There's fingerprints on both! I forgot about this! <laughs> Dude, this is actually the real final testimony. So the gun happens to be the same model as mine. Pure coincidence. But take a closer look. Only one of them has a laser pointer attached to it. You can take the laser pointer off and Check the number of bullets left in the chamber. Only two shots fired, see? There's no evidence that I switched the guns, right? <laughs> All I can think of is having them match the same number of bullets. He just shot, like, the ground while we were talking <laughs> and in logic chess. We couldn't hear it or something. We couldn't hear it because we were in logic chess. We were literally in another dimension. <laughs> in another dimension, he's like... Giving you too much credit? Way. That hardly sounds like something you'd say. Guess I'm just more modest than you. <laughs> and instantly you stopped being modest. Man, can you just, like, imagine if this was your first game? This is really difficult for a first oh, yeah. case. This is a tough game. Well, except when I'm in front of a chessboard. Hmm. But we're not in front of a chessboard. We're not in logic chess. It's funny, you never logic chess this guy. Oh, that's He'd a be a natural at it. That's too bad. Don't use that as an excuse later. I didn't lose the game. I just couldn't find enough evidence. You're the one who should have an excuse ready. You didn't beat me at chess. You only found the evidence. The gun happens to be the same model as mine. Coincidence, you say? Or perhaps it was simply bound to happen. Which was it, pal? Us bodyguards needed to use them to protect the president. And no matter how you slice it, that lady is a total amateur with guns. It was necessary for both of us to use revolvers. A revolver? Like the one Knightley's carrying? Why would it be necessary? It has a simpler mechanism, so it's easier to use. Something along those lines, probably. When you gotta get the job done, or if you're new to this sort of thing, there's nothing better. The truth is, I thought it was pure coincidence all along. Everyone knows that the best gun is the Meyer Bullpup <laughs> from, God, uh, the James Bond multiplayer. Oh, is that that? It's the one, it's like a shotgun that you, like, does pump burst, but you can switch it to automatic, so it's just like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, basically, um, like a fence post. It's really weird, but it's really good. You attach the laser pointer to the gun yourself. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Show me the evidence. Um, well, that's... You can't go around calling people liars without proof. Actually, you can. That's why the internet exists. Didn't your daddy teach you that? He's dead. <laughs> on that point, I've got evidence on my side. Oh yeah, where was Edgeworth's mom in the midst of all this? We don't know. Maybe Edgeworth's that's what this game's about. <laughs> Edgeworth's mom? Like, is this gonna be like Zuko's mom? The whole game is just like a big... Journey, mystery. discovery, mystery. And then that. it never gets solved. <laughs> and then it never gets solved. Except when you buy the Edgeworth comics that come out afterwards. <laughs> they would have Edgeworth comics. Something absolutely Edgeworth would. manga. Something's been bothering me for a while now. What about the chamber of your own gun? My woman here? Now that you mention it. His gun's a woman? Yep. I've been firing it off for a while now. Yeah, you've accidentally almost shot your head, like, twice. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Every time he fires, he reloads the gun. So there's no way to check its status from the time of the incident. That's it. In order to switch the guns, he would have needed to reload the bullets. Knightley is barehanded, and he had no time to put on gloves when he the switch was made. Well, I think it's about time for you to resign. How about it, Prosecutor Edgeworth? We got this. There's no evidence that I switched the guns, right? If it's evidence... There isn't any. If there is, show it to me. We know that there is, pal! 
Don't we, Mr. Edgeworth? There is no time for another investigation. I can only use what I have right now. Think. Consider all the possibilities. <laughs> if you've got something to show, let me know. Evidence that Knightley switched the guns? Does that even exist? There's no evidence that directly proves that Knightley switched the guns. Yet we know for a fact he did. If he, if he didn't, there would be no explanation for the ballistic markings. I need to carefully consider the meaning behind every piece of evidence linked to his testimony. If he managed to change the gun, like, ch change the bullets and stuff behind his back, that Here's would be the thing. insane. If you're training for, like, the FBI, you have to do that. You have Behind to be your able, back and not be able to you see? You have to be able to not see your gun and switch it and reload it in the dark. I guess that, I guess that makes stuff. sense. That's but he's not part of the FBI. Train. He's just a random security team. Well, it's, it's the security team for the president. But he's just like, security team, you're from America. America's got guns. I want you. <laughs> I need to carefully consider, I need to carefully consider the meaning behind every piece of evidence linked to his testimony. The real reason his approval ratings are down is because everyone discovered he was actually fat and, did, and had an inflatable suit. <laughs> yeah, the truth must that. be there. He's like, he's actually basically taft. Yeah, he would get stuck in his own bathtub. That's the only thing Taft is known for at this point, which yeah. is so sad. Not everyone can be Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That evidence is this. You call that evidence? Prosecutor Edgeworth? You're trying too hard. Certain traces were left on this gun. Traces that prove this gun belongs to you. Show it to me! What kind of piece you got? A rook? A bishop? It better not be a pawn. It's a queen, mother effer. <laughs> the traces that got nightly left on the gun are the fingerprints, the ballistic markings, or the blood stains. What? You wouldn't leave blood stains on it. <laughs> Let's get the stupid one out of the way first. It must be the blood stains. And which blood stain would that be? The only blood stains I can recall belong to the killer and rook. Did you find another one? Please do tell. Or perhaps the bloodstains somehow link me to the gun? Nah, th that's... I can't make such a mistake after coming this far. The ballistic markings, of course. M Mr. Edgeworth, about the ballistic markings... I know how they work, Detective. I don't need an explanation. Objection. You sure about that? You don't seem to get it. The markings point to me, huh? Just what kind of ballistic markings are they, anyway? Do they spell out my name? Great joke, Prosecutor Edgeworth. He's right. Ballistic markings only link a bullet to a certain gun, not to the user. What I need is evidence that directly links Knightley to the gun. Traces left, or... Oh, I guess we're just gonna let that... Be you left happen. your fingerprints on this gun. <laughs> Fingerprints? Ha! That should be expected. I handled the gun earlier when I seized your evidence. Of course my fingerprints are on it. But what if the fingerprints are in a place they should not be? What? Th that's not possible. Allow me to show you. There is one place where your fingerprints should not be. This piece of evidence will deal the final blow to your cane. Yeah, it should not be in the section where there's the bullets. Here, Detective Gumshoe, please have a look at the cylinder. Two shots were fired, sir, but where would the fingerprints be? On the individual bullets, right? You made the switch when you seized the evidence earlier. However, if all you did was switch the guns, you would have been found out right away. That's because the number of bullets fired by the two guns are different. The gun found in the audience area had fired two shots, sir. Then what about Mr. Knightley's gun? He fired two shots at the balloon when he was on the stage. And later one shot to kill Rook. Rook? Rook? <laughs> Even Rook? 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 Three shots in total. Not counting the number of shots he's fired since then. And after each of those times, you would reload the bullets. Tell us, Knightley. Were you wearing gloves when doing that? <laughs> Officer, in your report earlier, were there Knightley's fingerprints found on the gun, and where were they? Sir, 
The prints weren't just found on the outside of the gun. They were also found on the bullets as well. If all you did was handle the evidence, why would your fingerprints be on the bullets? Th that's... With this, it has been proven that you switched the guns. The gun which fired the bullet oh. that took the victim's life. What? I think he also looks like Bruce from Zelda. Oh, yeah! That's it! That's yes, it. he Put does! <laughs> it belongs to you. Horace Knightley, you're the one who stole Rook's life. You are the true assassin. Yeah. I... I... I'm... I'm... Checkmate. That was some interesting knockdown scene. Uh, I, I should have been made leader. Me, Rook, the piece of scum. If it hadn't been for him, he's old. Than you. I would have been had complete control over everybody. My assassination plan. It was perfect. My plan was perfect. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, if you please. Roger that, sir. Edgeworth! This game isn't over yet! You hear me? <laughs> I... I... That's enough. The rest of this game will continue in the courtroom. <laughs> Damn it! Damn you! Also, let it be known that Horace Knightley was the only person in the franchise to get hit in the head by the Finker statue and live. <laughs> Was that one of the things, one of the things that fell on his head was the finger Thank statue? Thank God. March 25th, 5, 12 p.m., Gord Lake Park Stage. Oh, the president's reinflated his suit. <laughs> yep, he can't, he can't possibly show himself not hot. You have my gratitude. You exposed a murderer amongst my bodyguards, and for that I am truly in your debt. As soon as he stepped outside the plane, he reverted back to his king like persona. More Ooh, it's like Martin Luther King Jr. a little bit like that. No, so, okay, let me, let me explain. Martin Luther King Jr. used an inflatable suit? No! <laughs> I read a play about him, and basically he had, he had, like, his different persona that he assumed for speaking, um, oh, interesting. versus with his family. And you can oh, see that, that sense, in the yeah. show, and it's actually historically accurate, I'm pretty sure. So, oh, cool. it's kind of cool. Yeah. Some time ago, when I proposed the fake assassination plan... You want me, and not- oh, not- this. You want me! You want me, the president, to be a fake assassin? You, you want me, and not Rook? Rook declined. So I'm asking you, what do you say? Alright, let's do this. I'll come up with the perfect plan. I can't even use that guy as a chess piece. What? When Knightley said that, his eyes were overflowing with hatred towards Rook. Frankly, I was quite anxious about asking Knightley instead of Rook. Now that I recall those events, he probably sensed the anxiety in my countenance. Perhaps that is what gave him the impetus for murder. Mr. President, if you had not orchestrated that fake plan, this would not have happened. That is your sin. Shall I forgive this sin? <laughs> A sin that won't disappear. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely correct. You have my sincerest apologies. I too must bear some responsibility for this. Yeah. Even so, I am most grateful to you. Why is he, like, dressed in a Waluigi suit with a Cheetos tie, <laughs> Purple by the way? is my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then he's got, like, an orange tie that looks like the Cheeto... The Cheeto Chester the Cheetah. Che Chester the Cheetah died so it would be made. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Cheetos are no longer served in Zanefa. <laughs> I thank you for solving the mystery of Rook's death. I am scheduled to stay in this country for a little longer. But if any of you ever wish to visit the Republic of Zanefa, you will always be welcome. Okay. Good for you, I guess. 
Oh, Lottie, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy for you, Nicole. I also love the victory music. It does sound like we're shopping in a mall. <laughs> you were set up as the suspect for the murder. Still, your involvement with the fake assassination plan remains a fact. You will have to submit to police questioning later. You should know that there's still a possibility you may be charged with some crime. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this. I understand you want to catch a scoop, but there's a line that should not be crossed. I hear ya. I promise to reflect on this. We did it, Mr. Edgeworth! That was awesome! Prosecutor Edgeworth solves presidential assassination attempt! It's gonna be big news! M big news? M Mr. Prosecutor, would you mind telling me how you feel about solving this case? That was certainly a quick change of attitude. No comment. Aw, don't be so ornery. The reason is because this case is not over yet. Huh? Not over? Yeah, we have what do you Mr. Mean, sir? Getaway with a boat. What shows that the case is not over yet? Mr. Getaway with a boat. The killer's card. The killer still hasn't carried out his request. You mean killing the president? I hope this doesn't turn into a larger incident. An assassination attempt on the president of Zayn Fa. News of this incident spread across the entire country. The mass media also hounded me as I began to prepare for the trial of Horace Knightley. Everyone had seen the news and everyone was talking about it. However, amidst the commotion, nobody noticed that the game had only just begun. Mm -hmm. The game had just begun because it's only been the first case! The end. Oh, it's gonna man. be like Turnabout Choo Choo is the next one. A brand new episode has been added. The Imprisoned Turnabout. Ooh, is it like that uh, enemy from Skyward Sword that has like all the- The Imprisoned! The imprisoned. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like that? I think it's gonna be exactly like that. Oh, man. <laughs> now I'm pumped! <laughs> <laughs> With the Teletub- or not the tub, the Sesame Street feet. <laughs> oh, there's, uh, the Zelda. There's Zelda. It's totally- it's totally- <laughs> it's I don't like that game. No, I actually love Turnabout Target. No, it's totally the Imprisoned from Zelda, because that's Zelda. <laughs> that's Marty's Fury. Next it's episode, not, absolute, we're going no to Faron Woods, and <laughs> where, where the Imprisoned is, and Zelda well, meets us who, there. Who else is that? The question is, is that thing a veil, or is that, like, bangs? Like, or, like, bangs. Or is it the Imperial Spy? Oh, with the nose? With the trunk. Yeah, that could work. Alright, well, that's gonna be an exciting episode. <laughs> I love that case so much. But thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're starting the Imprisoned Turnabout. It's gonna be awesome. I think you're really gonna like that case. I hope so. You said there's more Zelda, calls. Zelda, I think you're gonna really like as a I character. I like Zelda. So Zelda's great. Cool. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.